All right, guys, so not only did I figure out what caused the damage in the hit and run case of my 2004 Tahoe here, I also got to check for the damage. So this is my 2004 Chevy Tahoe Z71. Um, in a previous video, I mentioned that it was kind of involved in a parked hit and run incident, and I was trying to get to the bottom of what happened. If you want to kind of see the recap on that video and uh, how I'm planning on going forward with this, I guess you could click the link at the top of the screen, but I am going to do a little recap um, in this video here. So about halfway into March, I had the Tahoe parked on the Upper West Side in Manhattan. Now, I've been parking it there for a couple of years now. I've never had any issues with anybody hitting it or anything whatsoever. So when I parked the thing Saturday night, um, everything was fine. You guys have seen the channel. You know the work I put into this thing. You know this front end was basically perfect before this happened, with the exception of the little rock chips and stuff at the very bottom of the bumper. But aside from that, this thing was pretty mint. So I parked it Saturday night in the city. I didn't come out Sunday. Monday morning, I came out early to move it for alternate side parking and go to work. And that's when I found all this damage. This is pretty much untouched. The only thing I did was put the tape on the lights because I had to drive it home. But you can see there's a pretty uh, substantial dent on the hood there. The bow tie fell off and I did find that underneath the wiper um, on the windshield. The grill's cracked in multiple places. Um, the headlights, well, the signal lights fell out. The tabs broke off of them. The support back here that they clip into, that actually has a crack in it. So at the time this happened, I literally walked up to the thing and my jaw dropped. I'm like, what the hell happened? I mean, if you look at the damage, the way the hood's dented, this thing's pretty high. So if something was gonna back into it and drive away, it had to be like a moving truck or something like huge like that. So um, my initial reaction was to kind of look around in the area. I was parked in front of a driveway for a uh, parking garage. So I looked right out front there. There were no cameras, unfortunately. I looked, kind of just glanced around the area. I only found a camera on the apartment building directly across the street, um, right at their entryway. Uh, that was pretty much directly across from where the Tahoe was parked. They had a camera there. At the time, I didn't do much of it. I've had my cars hit in the past, not in the city, but other places over the course of the years, different vehicles I've had. They've got scuffed, they got, you know, dinged or scraped. People just can't park. They'll hit into it backing out, scrape a door or something. So I figured, you know, this was, that was it. I'm not going to figure out what happens. I'm going to have to fix it on my own. Uh, the following weekend, I went back to the city and I decided to try to do a little investigating. Basically, I went to that building across the street that had the camera right in front of the parking garage. Um, I went down, I spoke to the parking attendant. He showed me the monitor just from like the glass counter and literally the camera just faces straight down at that driveway entrance. So it didn't catch anything across the street. But I did notice that they had a second camera directly next to that one mounted on the building that wasn't displayed on that screen. So I decided to go upstairs to the building itself, talk to their security people, and they actually had access to that camera. And I could already see through the window that uh, there was a dumpster parked where the Tahoe was at the time. And uh, well, after, you know, everything happened. And I could see perfectly that that camera was aiming where the Tahoe was parked. So I nicely asked if the uh, security guys could check the footage. I gave them the dates. Um, I gave them the make and model, the color of the vehicle. And I pretty much pointed on the monitor exactly where it was parked at that driveway uh, for the other parking garage. They told me they couldn't check the footage. They had to have their manager do it and they'll get back to me. I left my phone number. I didn't think much of it. Honestly, I wasn't sure if they were gonna be very helpful. But literally an hour later, I'm eating lunch. I get a phone call from that security office regarding uh, you know, my request. And that's where it started getting a little interesting. So basically what happened was that he told me he needs to send an email or he spoke to his supervisor and I need to email his supervisor my information, like the, the make, the model, the color, where it was parked, the times it was parked, the date. And apparently he was gonna check the footage. So uh, after he told me that, that's when it started to get a little weird because he said, uh, I'm gonna try to, you know, quote this guy as best as I can, but something along the lines of, um, yeah, just send him the pictures, he'll check the footage for you. But I think I know what may have happened. And he said, on 
that day, it was very windy and there was some scaffolding flying around in the street. Now keep in mind, this building across the street, they just had a camera. I didn't have any intention of going over there thinking they may have had anything to do with this. Hell, they could have been a taco cart and I would have went over if they had a camera. But this is the kind of first real lead I had. I was just expecting them to look at the camera for me. Maybe there's like a moving truck with a, a company name on the side. I could just get, you know, go to that company. They can see who's making a delivery that day. Maybe I could get to the bottom of it that way. Maybe I could get a license plate, something like that. But yeah, that's the first I heard of the whole scaffolding story. After that, um, I sent the information to the resident manager of the building. He texted me back and I actually have the email. I could tell you exactly um, what he said in that message. So after I sent him my info, he literally emailed me back uh, within an hour. So this all went down pretty quick after I actually spoke to the security people. Um, he said, Matt, good afternoon. Sorry to hear about this. I have forwarded your information on to the scaffolding company and we will review the tapes on Monday to see if we could view what happened. We'll follow up with you. So once again, um, they just came out right out and said the thing with the scaffolding that they're going to forward it to the scaffolding company. I'm just trying to get a video footage to see what the hell hit my Tahoe. But apparently uh, scaffolding has something to do with it. So anyway, the week went on. I didn't really hear back from him. I sent him more emails saying, hey, did you get in touch with the scaffolding company? I went to the body shop and I got a quote, the body shop that I use. And um, I was pretty much just about right on the money when I said about 2,500 to repair it. They quoted me at 2,300 with tax, um, everything fixed 100% basically uh, brand new, like it never happened. So they're gonna fix the hood, they're gonna change the grill, you know, OEM replacement grill, new lights, uh, painting this top portion of the bumper because it is scraped up pretty bad from the lights flapping around. And yeah, $2,300 to make it look uh, basically brand new front end wise, like the damage never happened. So at that time, I still didn't hear anything back from him. It was the middle of the week. So after I got this quote, I relayed it over to him. Um, and I said, here's the quote that I got from my body shop. If you are in touch with the scaffolding company, because the, the building that had the cameras on it, that whole side of the building was covered in scaffolding. So if something happened, it was their building's scaffolding that uh, caused the damage. So after I didn't hear back from him, I sent him the quote. Um, I tried calling him up, I spoke to him, he had a dig for my email. It seemed like he kind of didn't know who I was and then um, he said he was gonna talk to the scaffolding people again. That whole week basically passed and then the, I was on the third weekend at that point since the damage happened. Once again, back in the city, the area where I parked it and I decided to look for myself and see if I could find the scaffolding company. Um, obviously right on the side of the building, on the scaffolding, there was a company name and a phone number. I shot them an email that night. I went onto their website and they had apparently the president of the company's email, not sure if it was or not, but I shot him an email directly. Everything I basically just explained to you, the pictures, how they're telling me scaffolding played a part in this. And they got back to me the next morning, which was on a Sunday. They were sorry to hear about it. And uh, they wanted to talk to me regarding the damage and um, possibly having it fixed or how to pay for the damage. So they weren't denying anything. And I'm not gonna name the company because they did what they had to do. It was relatively easy to get, you know, the restitution for this, but that's not the end of the story. So that following Monday, the Sunday after they sent me the email saying they wanted to talk to me about this, I get a call from a guy at the scaffolding company and he tells me, um, he had the quote at this point because I sent, uh, I sent it to them in that email on that Sunday night. And the first thing he basically says was, okay, I wanna to talk to you about the quote. You know, nobody actually said what happened. And I never got any video footage of this. I don't have any video of whatever the hell causes. I mean, if you look at it, it had to be like a pipe or something that flew off the scaffolding because it looks like it would have impacted right here. And the reason the lights came out is because they are clipped into the grill. There's no bolts or anything. And uh, it had to be pretty hard to crack the grill and do this. I mean, imagine if somebody was walking and that hit him in the head or something. Anyway, <laughs> the first thing out of the guy's mouth was um, something along the lines of, well, I looked at your quote and I don't think we're gonna be able to pay that because the vehicle's a 2004 and 
it's not worth um, that kind of money to fix it. That's basically what he said. And my initial reaction was, who are you to decide that? And 100%, I think the thing that saved me here was the fact that I had the YouTube channel. If I didn't, I don't know if it would have went this smoothly. But after he told me that, I said, well, the thing is, I bought this thing a few years ago and I've slowly been restoring it. I redid the seats. I actually have a YouTube channel where I'm doing all this stuff to it. And it's basically a prop for my business or YouTube channel. It's not just a run of the mill car that, you know, anybody's driving and whatever. It has 200 something thousand miles on it. Cut me a check and I'll get something else. That wasn't the case. So after I told him that, he said something along the lines of um, almost word for word oh shit, why couldn't it have been a regular Toyota Camry or something? He's, that's basically what he said about what got the damage. So uh, at that point, I guess he knew he had to pay and he wanted to know, uh, he wanted to see links in the videos. So he gave me his uh, phone number. I texted him all the big videos, the carpet cleaning, where we completely redid it with the wheels, you know, the badges, cleaned everything up, uh, redoing the seats. And after that, he said he was going to relay that to his supervisor and uh, see what he can do. So a few days later, I get a text message from him. Well, no, I sent him a text message because I haven't heard anything back. And I asked if um, he talked to his supervisor and if they're gonna be paying for this. Actually, also, I have the, the text messages from that. I sent him, yeah, the last video I sent him was the, uh, the playlist of all the videos we did on it. And then he asked if I could send him a better picture of both pages of the estimate repair because I just took pictures of it. So I sent him a, a scanned copy through email. And then um, I sent him up close pictures with all the damage circles, like the cracks in the grill, uh, the scrapes on the bumper, the broken lights, the crack in the, the headlight support. Yeah, also in the estimate um, for the repairs in the body shop, that includes the, the cracks in the headlight uh, support where the turn signals clip into. And then after that, um, I sent another email saying also the low end of the blue book value is 4,100. So I blue booked this thing uh, with the options it has with the mileage with the 240,000 miles. Uh, the blue book value private party, the average was $6,200. Low end was 4,100. High end was 8,300. So even, uh, and you guys know this thing's pretty clean. So I would think it'd be somewhere in between that. Um, so $2,300 to fix it is a lot better than the low end of the blue book. 4100 and then he sent me another text back got it i just need to discuss it with our fleet manager and i'll get back to you today how we're going to cover the cost um, and that was on march 29th and then i just said okay and then um march 30th i asked if he was able to get in contact with the manager yet and he said i will cut the check this week it should be ready by the end of this week and basically um he called me, I think that Friday, and wanted to know if I could meet in the city, one of their drivers or whatever, uh, to pick it up. And then I just asked if he could mail it. And they mailed it to me, and they got paid for it. So I wasn't expecting this outcome. I'm not going to lie. I've never had any good luck with any damage being brought on to any of my cars. You know, usually it's in a parking lot, somebody scuffs it or scrapes it or something like that. They don't drive away, you know, I never figure out what happened. I should have had a dash cam and you bet your ass I'm gonna be installing one before we fix any of this. And the funny thing is I have one. It's been sitting in my bedroom for over a year now because I never got a chance to install it. But yeah, next video we're gonna be installing that and we're also gonna start um, on the repairs. Total cost was gonna be 23.36.15. There is the check they sent me. So I have, um, I have the money to get this fixed. We're going to be replacing the grill. I'm gonna get a new hood. I gotta get different lights and then um, it's gonna go over to the body shop. They're gonna paint it. I did get a quote for the rust on this side. I went over this in the last video when I kind of told you guys what was going on in case you missed it. But yeah, I got a quote on fixing that. And uh, that's gonna cost around a thousand bucks. So a thousand thirteen seventy four. And they're gonna cut that out, you know, obviously weld it up. And they're also gonna spray um, wax in the rocker to prevent, 
um, hopefully any more rust from forming. So I am gonna go ahead and just have them do that for a thousand bucks. This I'm gonna be paying for out of my pocket uh, because I do not feel like playing with any more rust after the last Trans Am video. But as for my plans for this thing, I did mention we are gonna start building it now, now that I do need to kind of fix this thing and there are some other issues going on with it. Uh, the rear diff is leaking still, the uh, running boards on both sides, the steps are pretty much falling off. I took, a, I took the cover off of this side uh, last video and found out that the rivets just kind of popped out of the rocker on this. That's why that one's loose. So I'm gonna remove it, get that repaired. And I did decide to leave the factory Z71 Nerf bars on. Um, a lot of you guys were kind of 50-50 on it and I figured pretty much I was thinking what a lot of you guys commented. These are specific to the Z71 package of this year. It kind of just, you know, fits it. It goes with the package. With the Z71, I think you got the roof rack, you got these Nerf bars, uh, you got the tow hitch, you got the, you know, the color match grill. So I figured uh, I'm gonna need a way to get into this thing anyway when I lift it up. And yeah, I could go to those uh, power fold down rockers, uh, you know, step up, uh, step Nerf bars, whatever the hell they're called. But for, I think they're like 1700 bucks. And I have the factory ones that are in pretty good condition. I might as well just freaking put them back on and uh, leave it looking, you know, kind of OEM. I'm kind of going with this thing, the same theme that I did with my Camaro, where it's going to be modified, but I want it to look as if uh, it could have came out that way when it was built new. So I'm not going to go super crazy with a, you know, a giant lift with making it look too different, but I am gonna do some subtle upgrades that I think are gonna look cool. Some things that are gonna improve performance. And yeah, by the time this is over, we are gonna be adding a shitload of power to it. Next video, I'm gonna give you guys a rundown on my entire plan for this. So that's gonna be my build plans as far as what uh, I have lined up for this. I do have parts on the way. Um, I got to go pick up a hood, I got the grill, I got the front bumper, and I have a rear bumper I'm going to be putting on. So uh, these guys are getting ready to race RC cars, so I'm going to have to uh, shut down now. You guys aren't going to be able to hear me. But yeah, next video I'm going to kind of give you guys my plan. We're going to do a dash cam, and we're also going to be doing another mod to the instrument cluster. But for now, that's going to do it for this one. See you guys in a few days.